Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our Monday, Monday evening webinar. If you're joining us from Asia, uh, good evening. If you're joining us from Europe, good afternoon. And if you're joining us from the United States, good morning. Uh, we've been uh, hosting this webinar on this channel for almost five years now, um, every Monday morning, and that's a really powerful testament to not only to this group, but um, how many people are actually interested in essential oil. So I want to say uh, a special good morning to my friends in Singapore and Vietnam and Malaysia and the Philippines. You're going to be having some wonderful visits soon. I am going to be in the Philippines from uh, May 1st to May 8th. And we just found out that Nick Kilpack is going to be in Singapore from the 8th through the 13th. So really good and exciting information. We're going to be kind of uh, giving that region a big hug, if you will. And um, I want you to all make sure that we, you clearly understand that our goal is to um, build and grow Southeast Asia. That's our goal, build and grow Southeast Asia. And if you are in Southeast Asia, this is the team that you want to be on. So this is, this is the place to be if you're in that region. And if you know anybody who would like to be part of this team, please let them know about all the efforts that we're making to build and grow that region and the, and the team in that area. So let's get started right away. Today's presentation is actually about Copaiba. And when I started talking um, about a minute ago before I turned on the, um, the recording button, um, what I said was that uh, Copaiba is one of those unusual oils that's very powerful. And we actually have a couple of unusual oils that are very powerful, things like frankincense, um, things like Siberian fir, um, maybe Melissa. We're not going to talk about them all today, but oils that are really special and have a unique um, chemistry. And we want to make sure when we're building our... Um, our library, if you will, or our inventory of essential oils that we're making sure to include oils like that. Those are the types of oils that you want to make sure are in your medicine cabinet and that are available to you so that if you do have some sort of a health challenge, you're able to call on those oils. And then if you are um, a person like me who likes to use certain oils on a daily basis, you have them ready for you all the time. So make sure that especially oils like helichrysum and copaiba are in your medicine chest and are available to you at all times because they really are super important. And we're gonna compare and contrast a little bit. What are the benefits of each one? Um, I'm going to actually share my screen with you. I see everybody's kind of popping on. Um, that's a really good thing. I'm so happy to see everybody on. Let me share my screen. Excuse me. Oops. Okay, here we go. Okay, so we want to talk a little bit about Copaiba today. The interesting thing about Copaiba is it has a very mild scent, super mild, to the point where I've had people open up the bottle and they've said to me, it doesn't smell like anything. And when you taste it, it has a super mild taste. Again, people have said it doesn't taste like anything, which is a terrific thing in my opinion because some of our oils that are powerful are actually fairly strongly, have fairly strong tastes. Things like oregano um, are very powerful tastes and may be um, less palatable to certain things, to certain people. What I love about Copaiba is that the taste and the smell are very mild. They blend well with other essential oils. You can mix them in, you can mix Copaiba into different sorts of blends and you get um, something richer and more vibrant, but not necessarily an oil that will alter the smell of the entire blend. So as you know, if you were doing a very floral blend, maybe with something with a little bit of lavender or rose or jasmine, and you threw some oregano in there, the oregano might offset the blend to the point where it wouldn't be that fun to smell it anymore. You're looking for floral, and all of a sudden you have this very strong herb. Same thing with some of our oil, like arborvitae, um, maybe a drop or two in a spicy or woody blend. But again, what doesn't play well in the sandbox with uh, florals or other softer, maybe citruses, it's a little harsh. Um, but what I love about Copaiba is you can mix it into just about everything and increase the chemist, chemical profile of that blend. So isn't that a powerful thing? Increase the chemical profile, especially we're, we're talking about healing and wellness, 
Copaiba is a great addition to our medicine cabinet. So let me talk a little bit about what Copaiba is all about. Number one is we're going to talk about the what is the endocannabinoid system. The endocannabinoid system is a way for our body to begin to heal and repair itself. And we're gonna I'm gonna show you a few slides. And at the end, I'm actually gonna have a video of someone very special talking about um, copaiba and reinforcing everything that we're gonna learn right now. Um, so the endocannabinoid system was discovered in the early 1990s, and scientists have worked to learn as much as they can about it, publishing thousands of peer-reviewed studies. These studies have shown that the endocannabinoid system helps to regulate everything from mood to immune system function to sleep and more. The system is made up of receptor sites on cells enzymes and endocannabinoids, cannabinoid-like compounds that are naturally produced by the human body. The receptor sites include the CB1 and CB2 receptors, which respond differently to different cannabinoids. And we're gonna go into this in great detail, folks. So for those of you who are not scientifically minded, like me, I'm more of a math person, don't panic. It will get very, um, very uh, clear to you very soon. The CB1 receptors are most prevalent in the central nervous system, while CB2 receptors are found mostly on cells in the immune system. THC, which is a compound that reacts primarily with CB1 receptors, is the one that can cause the well-known high feeling. CBD, on the other hand, tends to work indirectly on CB2 receptors, while B CP works directly on CB2 receptors. So what we want to do is THC is what we would uh, uh, would be the compound that would be um, found uh, most prevalently in marijuana. CBD would be in some of the um, uh, oils that you find, the cannabinoid oils that you find online. And then um, while uh, the um, Copaiba works primarily directly on CB2 receptors. So we're talking about CB1 and CB2 receptors, but let me show you a little, a little diagram here. Okay, so here's our endocannabinoid system. We have our CB1 receptors and our CB2 receptors. Our CB1 receptors are really where we um, influence the brain and the central nervous system, and CB2 receptors um, are controlling our endocrine and our immune system. So when we talk about that system, we're talking about different types of receptors, but all of which are um, important for us to maintain in general and good health. So when we talk about cannabidiol, cannabidiol um, that's CBD, that's the CBD that I was talking about before. When I was talking about THC, that's the tetrahydrocannabinol. And when we talk about BCP, that's the beta carophylline. Um, cannabidiol is present in low quantities or not at all in some of our oils that we see um, online, and it does not act directly on the, on the um, CB receptors. When we're talking about the CB receptors, we want something that's going to influence them directly without giving us the high of marijuana. We want something that allows us to basically repair our receptor sites and work on improving their functioning without allowing us to kind of slip into that um, that groggy feeling or that very relaxed feeling that people get um, with marijuana, and also some of the side effects, long-term side effects that we see with um, uh, drug usage, whether it's legal or illegal drug usage. Um, tetrahydrocannabinol interacts, and this is the compound that we find in marijuana, interacts with the CB1 and CB2 set receptors, but it stimulates the psychoactive effects. That's what we're trying to avoid. And oil containing THC is a regulatory and legal challenge. While there are some places in the United States, certain states that are beginning the process of legalizing marijuana, I am clearly and acutely aware that places like Singapore and Malaysia will not be legalizing any of these compounds anytime soon, which is why an oil like uh, copaiba is cer certainly um, a very important um, addition to your general uh, um, health and well-being. 
Now, the third compound that we're talking about is beta carophylline, and this is what we find in the copaiba oil. So we don't find where there's no CB1 interaction which means we don't have any of those psychoactive effects. We get the same benefits as other cannabinoids. And while instead of having um, indirect interaction, we get direct interaction on the CB2 receptor. So that means anything to you. It basically is saying that instead of uh, looking for something that comes around through the back door, it's actually walking in through the front door and providing us with direct and powerful effects that we need for general good health. And there are therapeutic amounts present in the oil. Um, well, I haven't stated this yet, the, uh, the copaiba oil that doTERRA sells is actually a blend of four different types of uh, copaiba essential oils from four different um, plant species. Um, oils with BCP or beta carophylline um, include black pepper, Melissa, Lang Lang, clove, helichrysum, and juniper berry. Um, also oregano oil, but in relatively small amounts. Certainly the bottom three under 10%, Melissa and Lang Lang in the 13% range, only black pepper really uh, crosses the 21%. And so um, while these oils are very good and you may have some of these oils in your um, stash, of essential oils, you wanna add perhaps copaiba. The good thing is if these are any of your favorite oils, you can actually pair them uh, well. Um, so, and the, as you can see, the second from the bottom is our helichrysum. Again, we're talking about pairing oils together. Helichrysum and copaiba together, a very kind of mild, gentle smell that's great to pair with other, either more floral or spicy oils and not really upset the balance in terms of um, their uh, smell profile. So this is, as I mentioned before, our copaiba is a special and unique blend of four copaferia species, uh, officialis, langsdorfi, reticulata, and coriacea. What's interesting is really it's not important that it's uh, what the, the four species are. What's most important is that this specific blend of four is giving us a higher and better and more thorough chemical profile than any one of these species individually. So you will find copaiba being sold by other companies. It is not a common uh, essential oil by any stretch of the imagination, but we are the only company who has this blend of four species. So when we're talking about copaiba, we look at basically six amazing benefits. Number one, liver and antioxidant support. Two, cardiovascular health. Three, sustained proper immune response. Four, digestive support. Five, support proper neurological function. And finally, proper respiratory function. So when we're talking about adding uh, copaiba into our daily routine, whether taking it in a capsule or uh, applying it to different parts of the body, I like the idea of being able to use it in, um, in different capacities. So for, let's say, liver and antioxidant support, I would probably be taking it internally or maybe applying it directly over my liver. For ca cardiovascular support, again, applying it right over the heart or wherever I was being challenged with circulation or taking it in a capsule. Immune response, um, I would be applying it to the soles of the feet or taking it in a capsule. Digestive support, the same thing. Respiratory function, I would probably be diffusing it. Also neurological function, I would add it to a blend that I was using for diffusing. Um, so let's talk a little bit about internal application first. Use two drops in a capsule and it can be taken in the morning and evening. You can blend with frankincense for increased cellular support. You can add two drops mixed with citrus. Why? Because it's very mild in flavor. You can take one or two drops under the tongue each morning, or you can blend with peppermint for digestive support at mealtime. When we talk about topical application, you want to apply directly over the affected area diluted in fractionated coconut oil. So as I mentioned before, when we're talking about liver function or cardiovascular function or perhaps even respiratory function, you'd want to dilute your copaiba with a little bit of fractionated coconut oil and then apply it over the affected area or the area that you're hoping to support. You can apply, uh, 
Combine it with blue tansy for soothing relief to skin irritations and to minimize blemishes. And um, finally, to blend with a facial moisturizer and cedar wood to support the, um, um, the surface of the skin. Let's talk about um, immune support now. So the three uses when we see um, uh, using copaiba, especially internally, we want to think about immune support, support for normal controlled inflammatory response, and reduction of tissues and neurological excitation. So what does this really mean? It means that if we are having a difficulty with inflammation, whether it's arthritis or some of other pain, maybe even headaches, we can begin to use copaiba either internally or applying it topically. Immune support, we would be blending it perhaps uh, in addition to to our on guard or maybe our oregano, um, adding it to our flu bombs. I know a lot of you love flu bombs and make your, your own on a, on a regular basis to support your family. This is a terrific way for you to be able to blend in um, a, one more um, sort of powerhouse oil that can help supporting your general function. Um, for aromatic application or aromatic usage, you want to breathe in the aroma periodically throughout the day to calm and soothe emotions and neurological activity. You want to combine with citrus to elevate mood, and you want to combine with Siberian fir or a floral oil to create relaxation. So again, using it in combination with other oils. If you diffuse copaiba alone, you're really not going to smell that much, but blended with other things, it's like the one-two punch, adding a little bit of extra oomph, if you will, to your, your aromatic applications. Okay, so that's a quick overview of what Copaiba is all about. And I know I went through this very quickly, but I've actually got something um, a more exciting. Whoops, nope, that's not what I want. So I'm going to stop the share for a second. Oops. You gotta go back and find your, um, your, the next part of the presentation, okay? The next part of the presentation is basically going to be a video. I'm gonna share my screen with you again, and we're gonna hear from someone that we all, oops, let me get back on. Sorry, everyone. Otherwise, I'm looking all over the screen today. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen with you again. And we're going to hear from the master himself, Dr. Hill. And I don't always have him online, but I'm doing this for two different reasons. This is a short video that Dr. Hill prepared regarding copaiba, so it specifically applies to this information. The other thing is, this is a video that is available on your back office. So if you go to doterra.com, Empowered Life Series. You can see it right there. And then you find Copaiba Dr. Hill and you can listen to this video as many times as you want. So this is a challenge for you folks. It's a challenge for you to go on your back office, go to do, or go to doTERRA.com if you're still using the older back office and find the Empowered Life Series video. So um, I want to make sure, can everybody, I'm assuming everybody can see my screen. Yes. And let's hit play. Here we go. Hi, everyone. Dr. Hill with you. Today, I'm excited. We're going to talk a little bit about a new essential oil that's created a lot of energy and a lot of enthusiasm, Copaiba essential oil. Now, personally, I also really love this essential oil because of all the broad effects that it has on several different systems within the body. So let's start there. Anytime, as you know, that we have an effect that comes from an essential oil, it's because of its chemistry. But in this case, it's also because of how it works with the body. And so let's talk a little bit about how Copaiba does that and what makes it very unique among other essential oils. So let's begin there. Let's talk about the endocannabinoid system. Now this is a system in the body that over recent months and even the last few years has 
really got lots more acclaim than what it's had in the past. And part of the reason is because it's so influential within the body. A lot of things that you and I do on a daily basis are affected through the endocannabinoid system. And it's a pretty easy system to understand. It's not very difficult. In fact, we can break it down into two primary categories. One is influence that we have within the central nervous system. Giving an example of how some of that might work, the endocannabinoid system working through your central nervous system and CB1 receptors, which is how that system is influenced specifically within the central nervous system has some some control over appetite whether or not you're nauseated cognitive functioning like memory for example reward intraocular pe pressure even discomfort there's a number of different things that are regulated through the central nervous system all of which are affected directly through the endocannabinoid system now this is interesting if you think about it and this is one of the primary reasons why there's so much enthusiasm and a lot of discussion about endocannabinoids most of which we're all very familiar with one of the reasons why i like our new essential oil capiva is because its influence into that system is not as direct as it is with some other cannabinoids. Now it'll become really clear why I think that's so important that we recognize that. The CB2 system or the system that functions outside of the central nervous system is a little bit different. It's focused in primarily on two critical roles that are important to function properly within the body. One is your whole endocrine system. This is the glandular system of your body. This is the chemical responses of your body. And so you can see why it's important to have good, consistent and proper influence that way. And then the one that many of us are constantly concerned with is our body's immune capability. And we can influence the ability of the body to have good, strong immune responses by working through the endocannabinoid system with the CB2 receptors. So we have those two categories, CB1 receptor, which is largely focused on the central nervous system, and CB2 receptors, which is primarily focused outside of the central nervous system. Now there's a lot of talk about cannabinoids. What is a cannabinoid? A cannabinoid is something that works directly through the endocannabinoid system. Typically people like to define that by the type of plant that it comes from, but that's not really necessarily a complete nor a proper definition. A cannabinoid is really defined by its ability to influence either CB1, CB2, or both receptors. One of the reasons why I like Capiva, and we've introduced this into the marketplace, is because of its ability to influence the receptors associated with the endocannabinoid system. So let's talk about those two receptors very specifically. And let's talk about it in the context of endocannabinoids as separate structures that function within that process. And by structures, what I really mean is chemistry. So there's some that you're going to be very familiar with, and I've highlighted these in the past. And so let me give you some brief explanation as to why I think each one has its value and what it primarily would do within the body. The first one is CBD, cannabidiol. Now cannabidiol is one that you've probably heard a lot about because of cannabis oil. It's interesting when we look at chemistry associated with essential oils, we are always concerned with their value being an issue of concentration and delivery. In other words, something might be very, very effective, but if I don't have a high enough concentration, I can't reach a threshold of activity that I'm looking for. One of the challenges that I've noticed with cannabis essential oil, for example, is that the amount of cannabidiol that's present sometimes is significantly lower than what you or I would think of as being effective in terms of the amount of chemistry. But if we actually look at what the medical or the physiological descriptor of what a cannabinoid is, it's any chemistry that can influence the appropriate receptor. So in this case, CB1 or CB2 receptors. I like defining it that way because not only is it physiologically and functionally correct, but it also gives us the ability to understand more effectively the type of influence that it will have. So for example, there are some that you might be familiar with. Cannabidiol, CBD, that's one that most people are familiar with. Another one that people are very familiar with is tetrahydrocannabidiol, THC. That's one that has heavy influence, for example, into CB1 receptors. 
the type of influence that we were looking for in doTERRA was a little bit different from that. We wanted to isolate very specifically how we could have good broad spectrum activity through the endocannabinoid system without any of the unwanted outcomes that are sometimes associated with other types of cannabinoids. For that reason, we've introduced Capiba essential oil. Capiba is rich in a very specific cannabinoid. Now remember, we've defined cannabinoids in the correct sense to mean anything that influences the endocannabinoid system. Now one of the reasons why I personally like Capiba is because we don't have some of the other unwanted effects that can come from other cannabinoids, and yet we have very powerful influence specifically through CB2 receptors. So we get this broad spectrum of activity. Now, if we talk about cannabinoids in essential oils, this is not something new. In fact, there's several essential oils that you've already had access to that have some of this cannabinoid, the same that we see in Capiba essential oil already present, beta cara offline. And the oils that we've seen that have cannabinoids in the past are oils like black pepper, melissa, langalang, clove, even oregano has a smaller amount, but some of the cannabinoids that are present. Capiva, however, is a little bit different than those other essential oils, and mainly because of the high level or concentration of the cannabinoid beta carophylline that we see in Capiva essential oil. This means that we have very powerful and very focused benefits. This means that if the value of an essential oil is based not just only around its purity, but the efficacy also comes from the potency of that, giving the right delivery in the right concentration, this means then that Capaiba fits that category better than any other essential oil that I'm personally aware of because it has high concentrations and we can deliver it in the right methodology. I think a lot of times we feel like because we may be dealing with complicated issues or because we're dealing with body systems that we don't have full understanding of, that somehow it must be really difficult and I have to have some challenging ways that I can use this essential oil or it won't be effective. Keep in mind that whether it's this oil or any of the essential oils that you will use, sometimes the most beneficial effects come from the simplest and easiest ways to use them. There's many other ways that we can use Capiva. One of my favorite ways has been that many times we're involved in activities or we have circumstances that cause discomfort to be a natural part of the process. Applying Capiva targeted right into those areas is an effective way to help soothe and help the body to overcome those challenges. It's far reaching the things that we can do with Capiva. Another good example on how to use Capiva is using Capiva for the skin itself. Applying again directly topically over the affected area, whether it's some type of an abrasion that's occurred or we have some type of a rash or an irritation that's developed. It supports the body's natural ability to overcome those issues quickly and fully. Remember, that's the advantage we have within the endocannabinoid system, is it's supporting the body in its natural processes, and we're working directly through that system. I don't know of the limitations that exist with Capiva, because when I think about the endocrine system and when I think about the immune system of the body, those are two critical areas that we need balance and that we need full functioning. The big challenge that we have is not looking at isolated circumstances with any essential oil. And I think Capiva fits into that category as well. We all can easily think of how I might use Capiva in an episodic fashion. The big challenge is how do we use Capiva on a daily basis? How do I use Capiva so that I have sustained support through those systems that we've talked about? For this reason, I think we need to develop daily routines. One of the things that I've begun doing in my own use of Capiva is I give myself aromatic exposure to that with consistency. The other thing that I've begun doing is I've begun using Capiva in an internal model. I like doing that because of the access that I get when I use essential oils internally, but I feel like I get sustained support from using that essential oil. So just to review quickly, Using Capiva aromatically becomes really powerful because we can have some constancy of the essential oil. Use Capiva topically for very targeted application. And then lastly, use it internally, which I do every single day, 
in a way that you can have whole body influence and this broader balancing aspect of the value that comes from influencing the endocannabinoid system. I really believe that over time we're going to find that copaiba is an essential oil that everyone will want to use every single day and will become a critical part of the essential oils that they use routinely. I know that's how it's been for me and I'm excited for what we'll yet discover about copaiba but could not be more grateful for the influence that this oil is already having and the impact to so many. My challenge to you is that you find effective ways that you can use this essential oil. Okay, so what do we think? So I know a little bit of that was repetitious because I started showing all the charts, but I hope what you saw really was a, um, a comparison of what I was talking about, which was really a list of day, daily usage. And then what Dr. Hill was talking about was a little bit more of the science, of course. Thank you to Dr. Hill. And um, I really love him, I have to say. And sometimes he goes way over my head, but I think in this particular instance, he was talking right on target about what we need to know, not only about the science, but about daily usage and including copaiba in our daily routine, that it can be integrated into our daily routine with great effect and really increasing the power of some of the other essential oils that we're using. I'm gonna call up one more slide because I wanna uh, make sure that we um, are clear about the other thing that we're talking about today, which is helichrysum and why I like these two oils together. So we're talking about um, general body support and immune support and making sure that the body stays um, healthy and functioning. We want to call up these more obscure, if you will, or maybe um, more broad-based oils. I know um, many times when I go to visit Singapore and Malaysia and Vietnam that everybody loves frankincense. And what's not to love, right? It's the Swiss army knife of oils. But what I'm challenging you to today is to begin to pull in some of these additional threads. What are the other oils that you can use on a regular basis? Please don't get stuck using the same thing again and again and again. Weave in your other essential oils. So let me just show you one more thing. Oops. sharing with my screen with you one more time. Okay, so let's look at helichrysum for a second. And I don't have a lot of slides. I have one slide about helichrysum. Again, my challenge to you is to go online and to try to find some of this information on your own, which is why we're doing compare and contrast today. So most of you know helichrysum, it's um, immortal flower. The reason uh, we use uh, helichrysum is a fairly expensive oil and only comes in a five milliliter bottle is that it's actually very difficult to distill. And that's why um, while it seems a, to be a fairly abundant flower, when it, it comes time to distill it, it is not what I'll call a juicy flower, which gives off a lot of essential oil. So um, helichrysum can be used for reducing the appearance of blemishes and wrinkles. Again, paired with copaiba can be a wonderful uh, one-two two pun one, two punch for your skin and also promoting a healthy metabolism. Again, we talked about copaiba and promoting a healthy metabolism. Often used in anti-aging process, products. Helichrysum is best known for its uh, endless applications um, for improving the skin. Um, other, uh, other uses besides um, uh, skin care can be for, as I said, a healthy metabolism. Um, again, can be taken internally. Um, we love its chemical makeup, number four, for its soothing properties. The presence of chemical com components called esters contribute to helichrysum's oils, calming characteristics, making the perfect oil for when you want to create a soothing sensation. 
we talked about copaiba, also creating that soothing, relaxing sensation. Again, can you create blends and add maybe a drop of copaiba and a drop of helichrysum and make it just that much more powerful? You'll notice that when you look at the um, lists of essential oils that are in some of your blends, helichrysum is often added in for that added punch, if you will, to make sure that it's, um, the, the blend is really important. Um, I'm gonna look, jump now to number six. Um, energizing massage can be used to promote vitality. So when we're talking about vitality, we're talking about good health. Again, helichrysum and copaiba can be used well together. And then finally, um, well, this says on your wedding day, but I will tell you one of the things that I love about um, hel helichrysum is that it is uh, terrific for nerve regeneration and restoration. And I've used it myself when I've had um, skin accidents with either cuts or burns or even people that are suffering from um, neuropathies, whether it's in their fingers or their toes that um, poor circulation combined with um, um, uh, juniper berry perhaps or a, um, um, or copaiba or even with um, cypress oil, we see really good effects for the circulatory system. Um, due to its chemical makeup, helichrysum is characterized as a, a renewing essential oil. It shares chemical qualities with other renewing oils like arborvitae, frankincense, eucalyptus, and wintergreen. Helichrysum oil is comprised of a chemical group called esters, as we said before, known to be calming, relaxing, and balancing. Esters can help reduce the appearance of blemishes, and um, the one found in helichrysum specifically is used in the perfumery industry to impart floral and fruity aromas. Um, mixes well with melaleuca, myrrh, frankincense, and lavender, in addition to other things. So I'm going to stop my share now. Whoops. I'm going to stop my share, and I want to make sure that um, I'm answering any questions you may have, number one, and then we're going to do our drawing for our, our helichrysum. And we, uh, we reached 100 participants today. Super exciting. 100 participants. I don't know if you can see that on the bottom of the page. Um, so let's, um, I want to answer any questions you may have. So in the chat, folks. Um, oh, great question, Doreen. Why is it necessary to blend four species of copaiba? Fabulous. For a couple of different reasons. Number one is we want to make sure that we have a sustainable source of copaiba. And right now, copaiba is not being grown commercially in very large quantities. So by, by breaking up the amounts in our blends, we're able to make sure that we have sustainability. Copaiba will be available to us for a long, long time. The other reason why we want to do that is each one of the copaiba species may add a little bit of extra, whereas a single species would not um, be able to um, blend exactly well and make sure that we had all the chemical and um, physical components that we need to make the best and strongest and most powerful um, uh, copaiba. So that's, that's the question for that. Any other questions on copaiba or maybe on helichrysum? I know you're all anxiously waiting for the for the, um, is copaiba safe for pets when diffusing? Um, as far as we know, yes. Um, it is considered one of those oils that's great for the immune system. You'd have to look up um, in some of our books. The other thing is, um, if, you, if you do talk to your upline, I know um, many of you don't have uh, pets outside of the U.S. because I'm talking specifically to Asia, but in the United States, we love our pets and we try to take good care of them. So um, yes to copaiba, safe for pets, and outside of the U.S. if you're um, not using, um, I have to say, I don't know if I would necessarily apply it to my pet, but uh, um, diffusing. The other thing you can always do with a pet, apply it to your own hand and then put your hand close enough to the pet that they would be able to smell it. Um, the uh, copaiba essential oil comes from a plant and um, is uh, strong enough but mild enough in smell that I don't think the, the pets in general would be disturbed by it. Okay, so our two um, helichrysum winners, is it supposed to be pro to pronounced copa? Oh, so interesting. Um, Dr. Hill often says copaiba, like I have a, I'm going to have a slice of pie. Co pi ba, 
but um, Copaiba comes from, um, from Brazil and other Spanish speaking countries. And if you were pronounced in Spanish, we pronounce the A and the I independently. So if you are a Spanish speaker, you can call it co pi e ba co pa e ba so um, either one is correct co pi ba or co pi e ba um, if you're a spanish speaker you add that extra syllable syllable in there if you're not then uh, co pi ba is just fine um, any other questions okay so i'm going to start picking my winners now and i'll be answering questions in the in the meantime so our two hold on Wow, 100 people today. This is unbelievable. Really cool. Okay, our two winners for today are Yoke Leng and Meng Hong. Yoke Leng and Meng Hong, congratulations. You are the winners of our, co of our Helichrism oil. And um, we are, we'll be posting the names of the winners on the chat groups, but you should contact uh, Shu Li for, to actually pick up your oil. She has them already. So congratulations, um, Yoke Leng and Meng Hong. Um, one more question. Someone says, uh, as you mentioned, it can be added to flu bomb. May I know how many drops? Actually, let me stop the recording.